Hi guys, welcome back. I want to talk to you a little bit about the lab that's coming up this week. Uh, it involves building a circuit that can make an LED appear to breathe. So you might have seen, if you uh, have a phone or a laptop, when you plug it in, the LED gradually grows brighter and then it goes dim and then it grows brighter and then it goes dim. We're going to make a circuit that does that. Um, it's not going to go dim gradually. It's going to gradually get bright and then switch to dark and then gradually get bright and then immediately switch to dark. So it's a little simpler than the perfectly breathing LED, but you'll get the idea. The, uh, the core element of that design, the way we're going to do it, is uh, to use a current source. So we'll have a current source, but the current source isn't going to be connected to a resistive network. It's going to be connected to a capacitor. So we're going to need to talk a little bit about what is a capacitor, how do they work, and what do they do. The main, the main point about a capacitor is that it's a device that stores charge, and the amount of charge that it stores is proportional to its voltage. And if you multiply the voltage across the capacitor by a constant, it's a characteristic of the capacitor, Kind of like a resistance, it has a characteristic value. A 100 ohm resistor has a value of 100 ohms. If you have one amp of current flowing through it, you'll get 100 volts of potential difference. Or if you apply a potential difference of 100 volts, you'll get an amp of current. So similar to that, when a resistor has a relationship between current and voltage, a capacitor has a relationship between charge and voltage. But it's the same idea. So that you could think of this as sort of Ohm's law of capacitors, I guess, if you'd like. Um, now, there's two different ways you can, you can view this equation. You can say, if you tell me the voltage on the capacitor, I can calculate the charge. Or equivalently, if you tell me the charge on the capacitor, I can compute the voltage. That turns out to be the way we're going to do it this week. We're going to have a constant current source. A constant charge per unit time is going to flow uh, onto the capacitor. And so the capacitor's charge value is going to increase in time. And, uh, and that means that the voltage has got to go up. Okay, that's the idea. So, uh, so let's look at that. I want to pop into LT Spice here, and I want to create a circuit like this one that has a current source. So let's go ahead and pull up um, current. So this is the current source built into LT Spice. <clears throat> I'll just go ahead and drop one here. Um, now, unfortunately, that one's going the wrong way. Hang on a second. Do they have another one that goes the other way? Oh, I guess I'll just, I guess I'll just flip it. Okay. Or I'll just, I can just build it like this. That's fine. I'm not going to try to outguess LT Spice. Okay. Um, right now, let's just send this through a resistor. So I'm going to go ahead and get a resistor here. That'll be the simplest thing, right? And then uh, I'll just complete the circuit. So it doesn't look exactly like my schematic in the lab handout, but it's just because the current's going down rather than up, but it's, I hope you can see that's the same circuit. I do need to choose a ground node, so I'm going to make this one my ground node. And I've got to pick a current. Let's do a 10 microamps, just because that's what's in the lab handout. And for the sake of argument, let's just make this a 1,000 ohms. Let's make it 10,000 ohms. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and run the, oh, I need to, uh, I need to add a spice directive. Let's do a transient analysis. Um, let's run for what? Uh, 100 milliseconds. And I want to include a keyword called startup, which means that it's going to start uh, from t equals zero with, it, with everything at their initial condition. And when we get a capacitor in here, that's going to be important because the capacitor is going to start with zero charge. And if you don't do that, then it goes off into the future and crazy things happen. So we'll just run it this way. Okay, so I'll say run. Uh, maybe I misspelled transient. Maybe it's just tran. Let's try that. Okay, sure enough. So um, this guy over here, <clears throat> I will uh, measure the voltage at this point. I get 100 millivolts. That makes sense. I've got um, 10 microamps flowing through the uh, 
through the current source and 10 micro 10 to the negative 5 times 10 to the plus 4 is 0.1 or 100 millivolts so that worked let's uh let's get rid of this resistor let's go ahead and put in a capacitor and uh run that guy and i'm gonna need more wire here and let's go ahead just like the handout i think in the handout i have 10 microfarads is that right and uh let's go ahead and run that run perfect now i'll get the voltage here and you'll notice the voltage goes up linearly with time gets up to a tenth of a volt in 100 milliseconds so if you run longer well, let's run longer and see what happens if i go run this thing for a thousand milliseconds okay look at the voltage now it's getting up to a volt okay if i ran it you can see it just keeps going up and up and up um now one of the things i suggest in the lab handout is what happens if i i try to drive it LED with this thing. So let's just hook an LED up here. Um, it doesn't really matter too much, but just for the sake of argument, I'll put a current limiting resistor in there. That isn't actually going to be a problem in this case for reasons we'll see here in a minute. I'll put the LED here and uh, let's go ahead and add a resistor. And then I'll try to Drive that LED down here and over. Right now, let's run that circuit. Oh, I've got to give this current limiting resistor a uh, value. Let's put in 330 ohms, like we did in the lab. Okay, and we'll measure the voltage. Now, notice that before I put this diode in there. Um, the voltage just kept going up and up and up and up. But now that I've got a diode in here, you'll notice that the voltage reached a very low value and then just kind of pooped out. And the reason has to do with the fact that this LED is a hungry beast. It wants current and um, we have limited ability here. So our adding this LED has affected the circuit no longer continues to increase in voltage the way it was increasing before. Oh, you say, well, maybe I need a bigger resistance there. Let's, let's try that. Let's add a little bit more resistance. Um, maybe make it a thousand ohms. Okay. Try that. Now let's look at the voltage. Well, it went a little higher, but not much. So we, we're in pretty big trouble here. We're not, there's no way out of this. We cannot drive an LED with this circuit directly. The solution to this problem involves isolating the capacitor from the LED. So let's try and do that. If I uh, get rid of this guy, let's just go ahead and get rid of these guys for now. And I wanna add a voltage controlled voltage source. That turns out to be the ticket. And that that's called an E element. It's a voltage dependent voltage source. I'm gonna go ahead and hook one up here let's take the output or capacitor connect it to the as the controlling voltage for this uh, voltage controlled voltage source and i'm going to make the gain one so it's going to have a gain of one what that means is the voltage drop across the voltage supplied by this voltage source is just going to equal the voltage measured here but this measurement process doesn't draw any current so it doesn't it doesn't disturb the current source. It doesn't affect the way that guy goes. So now if I um, if I hook an LED up, let's go ahead and get the LED back. And let's get our current limiting resistor back. Although there's another problem here. We'll find out in a moment, but let's go ahead and do it. Um, and then we can just extend this ground. We don't need to have separate grounds here. Okay, and we'll 
go back to 330 ohms maybe and then uh, let's try again okay now let's look at the voltage notice now it's going up and up and up what about the voltage here oh I left off my hang on that's not going to work I need this connection All right, let's look at the voltage here. It's going up and up and up. This guy's going up and up and up. Let's, uh, now I need, the problem is, the voltage is only one volt. This guy has a turn on of maybe two or something. So let's look at a little bit later in the transient. Let's go to 3000 milliseconds. Okay, and run the thing again. And again, let's look at the voltage here. No, it goes all the way up to three volts. Let's look at the voltage here. Aha, so that LED is definitely uh, turning on. There's current flowing. Um, wow, this LED has a surprisingly low turn on voltage, just about 0.7 volts, which is very low for an LED. But anyway, the point is there's a voltage drop across the current limiting resistor so we're definitely getting current the problem now is of course the current limiting resistor the voltage is just going to keep going up and up and up and up and uh, if we don't do something about that we're going to blow the LED eventually when the current goes high enough but we'll worry about that that's part of the lab um, anyway that's the idea I hope it makes sense to you guys and we'll see you in class